Well, here's a nice brief, but rather profound question. Here it is. How do you prove God is perfect? Well, the short answer to that question is you don't, but you're probably not going to be satisfied with that question, so let me go on a little bit further. I suppose this, the question uh, is uh, predicated on the statement of the Lord Jesus recorded for us in the part of the Sermon on the Mount called the Beatitudes and what immediately follows the Beatitudes, in which uh, Jesus said this to his disciples, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now the golden rule, of course, of understanding the Bible and studying the Bible is you take a text in its context. If you look at the context there, Jesus had been talking about the blessed life, and he'd been talking about people's understanding of the law, and he had been showing, showing them that in actual fact, very often they'd had a very superficial understanding of the law of Moses, and that he was taking them much, much deeper in their understanding. Now, he did, at no point in that teaching uh, tried to prove the existence of God. He, he, he just didn't do it. And one of the reasons, I suppose, for, for, is as far as humans are concerned, with human lack of understanding and limited brain power and the fact that our minds are fallen, human beings are not capable of proving conclusively that God exists, let alone proving conclusively his characteristics. Uh, now, it depends what we mean by prove, of course. When we think about proving that God exists or proving that God is perfect, we're probably thinking of logical proof or perhaps mathematical proof. But when we're thinking in, in terms of God, he doesn't fit into mathematical categories or even into logical categories. I'll give you an example of the limitation of logic in seeking to prove the existence of God. I've often heard people say, how can there be a God when there's so much evil in the world? Well, that's a, a penetrating question. How can there be a God when there's so much evil in the world? Well, the response to that that is perfectly valid is, how could there not be a God when there is so much good in the world? You use the same argument, basically, and you arrive at opposing positions. So we don't spend a lot of time trying with mathematical or logical proofs to prove the existence of God or the characteristics of God. What do we do then? We accept what God has revealed of himself in scripture and in par excellence in Jesus himself. And we read the Sermon on the Mount and we listen to what scripture is teaching us and we look at what Jesus is exhibiting and we see a reflection of God in all his perfection. And we are called to take that as a goal, which we will never experience this side of eternity and work towards it in the power of the Spirit. And just one added thought. The Greek word translated perfect here is teleos. And this Greek word teleos does not mean perfect in, in terms of moral excellence. It means to be absolutely complete. So look at all the things that uh, you find in the Beatitudes and all the things that you find that followed the Beatitudes, see in it a picture of God in all his completeness, his perfection. See Jesus mirroring these things, put them up as a goal and in the power of the Holy Spirit, seek to be transformed into their likeness.